Good morning. Does it look like I just woke up? Because I pretty much did. I've been working on something for the past week, which is to scan my artwork and create some prints. This is something that was on my to-do list for a long time, but I've had some demand lately for prints. I want to be able to give prices, whether people are buying original art or a print of that art. Some of them I would like to scan professionally, so that's why I want to experiment a little bit. And then once I have the scanned artworks, I want to do some test printing. So it's many steps just to be able to give a price to someone so they decide if they want an original or a print. But I feel like it's something that I had to do. And then I'll know which shop I'm going to go to for the scan and for the printing. And then I can just go from there. But I don't know, I thought maybe we could go through this journey together and hopefully at the end of this video we'll have figured something out or not. What I've done so far is that I made a list of all the print shops that can also scan artworks in Montreal. In the end I selected two that are the closest to my home so it's gonna be a bit easier for me. One of those, I already printed some artwork there, so I'm pretty confident in their skills and they're very well known in Montreal, so I'm not too worried about them. It's just that I haven't had anything scanned there. At the end, it's just going to be a matter of pricing, so I want to ask them a couple of questions, so I'll call them both. I also want to know how good they do with canvases. Acrylic paint can have a little bit of a glare, so I wanna know if they're used to that and if they're able to manage to get a good scan, even though there's glare. And the reason why I wanna have my artwork professionally scanned is because I want to have color correction. I want to be confident that the color I get in the file is the true color, and then when I send it, to be printed somewhere else. I won't have to worry about the color of the artwork because that's the thing. I could take photos of my artwork at home, but then when you get it printed, I don't know how good the color calibration is. It's always a little bit of a gimbal. At home, I can edit the colors. I can do all of that. It's just that it's all depending on the color I see on my monitor, on my computer then I adjust the colors accordingly, but I don't know if the color that I see on my monitor is a good representation of what I would get once printed. I would have to print a batch, and then if I'm not satisfied, I would have to make some adjustments myself, hope that it's good, and then print another batch. So I feel like it would potentially cost a lot of money. So I prefer having some artworks professionally scanned, and then after that, I'd be confident in selling the original and I could just do some prints for the rest and we would be good. When I do prints, I also want to print on really high quality paper so the prints would be a bit more expensive. So that's why I want to make sure that I get the color perfectly before I invest a lot of money in printing. Hopefully by the end of the day, I have decided where to go. So that's what we'll do. We'll just make some calls figure that thing out and then I have to go to the piercing shop to get my nose ring replaced because I had to take it off for a scan yesterday and I can't close it properly. So we'll do that today. Oh, um, J'appelle pour des informations parce que dans le fond, je voudrais scanner des, uh, des œuvres d'art sur papier ou Canva. Puis, I completed the two calls that I wanted to do. The first one was the place where I already had printed some artworks, so I knew that the prints were really good. And oh, the woman I spoke to was just so lovely. Oh my god, after that, she gave me all the information. She really took the time to talk to me, and she was really interested about my project. She wanted to know what type of artwork I was doing. She just had really good vibes. It felt like she cared. And yeah, I had all the info. I know exactly how much it's going to cost. I almost didn't want to call the second place after this, but you know, business is business. I have to get some quotes and some information. So I called the second place, but I really didn't have the same feeling. It was like the guy didn't care at all and he had no info for me. 
I asked for a range of prices and he wouldn't give it to me. He said I had to ask for a quote online and it depends on the project and not really on the sizes and types of artworks. Which for me is like, you never know what to expect. So I like having that other place where I know like this size is this price and that size is that price. And this is just always going to be the same pricing. I don't know. So I'm still going to fill the quotes forms and see, see how fast I get an answer. But I don't know. I feel like by this weekend, I want to know where I'm going. So if they don't answer me soon, then I'll just go to the other place. So I'm just going to go on my computer now and fill out some quote forms and then we'll see. Oh yeah, and another thing that was weird is that on their website at the second place, for the quotes, you have to select between like a small size or a big size original, but they don't specify what, what is considered as, as small or big. So I called and I asked like, what is the threshold for my artwork being a, a big size. And he was like, oh, you know, whatever. I was like, no, but what is it? Because <laughs> is it going to change the price? And he's like, oh, yeah, um, you know, whatever size that's bigger than, let's say, 12 by 18 inches is considered as a big artwork. And I was like, at first you didn't want to tell me the size and then you just decided on a size. And he said, you know what, just put everything under big size artwork. I'm like, but how does it make sense? <laughs> On their website, it said that they are offering proofs, but I have to ask for them and it comes at an extra price. So I asked him how much would it be to get proofs after? And he was like, oh, you know, it really depends. That's why we want you to fill out a quote. Compared to the first place, they told me that they would give me a proof and it comes at no additional price. So, you know, I'm leaning towards the first place for the vibes and the quality of the information. You know, I wanted to go to the jewelry shop to get my piercing changed. Turns out today's not a good day for that because there's a tornado watch in Montreal, which is a first pretty much. So we're kind of all watching the sky. It's, it got super dark in like five minutes it started raining sideways and the clouds were crazy so we're kind of still under a tornado warning so it's gonna have to wait yeah maybe it's not priority for today I feel like I haven't talked to you in so long, but maybe not. But I'm feeling very excited today because I'm off for seven days. Woo. <laughs> and this weekend is my birthday weekend. I turn 31. Can you believe? I can't. We're gonna go on a hike and then I'll get to hang out with family. So it's gonna be very fun. But before that, we have some things to do. <laughs> Last time where we left off, I was calling different places to get quotes for scanning my artwork. I really had a good feeling about the first place and not so much about the second, but I still filled out their quote form on their website and I got the results, which is going to turn out to be a bit more expensive than the first place because there's a bunch of additional costs. So the first place was more expensive to scan individual artworks, but that was the only cost compared to the second place where the scan was a bit less expensive but there was like handling fees and um, fees for proofs and stuff like that so in the end it's gonna be a bit more expensive i want to go with the first place it's just that now they're on vacation so it's gonna have to wait at the beginning of august but that's okay because i'm gonna take this time 
to do some more tests. What I want to do is varnish my big acrylic paintings. I went to the art store and the hardware store and bought some stuff. Let's start with the hardware store. Well, no, let's do a mix. I have two options to apply the varnish. I have this little roller and I have a soft bristle brush that I bought at the art store by the brand Raphael, which is one of the brands I love the most. It's made for varnishing. We're gonna try that. I have two types of varnishes already here, both by Liquitex Professional. I have gloss medium and I have a matte medium. So I think I'm going to use the gloss medium. And then I bought some more stuff at the hardware store. I bought a, um, a plastic drop sheet that is made for painting. So since my big canvas that I want to varnish is really big, I'm planning on putting it on the floor, but I wanted to protect the floor, so I got this. And I figured it might be useful for future big paintings. I bought this. What I want to do is make some fluid acrylics with a lot of water and then pour it on my paintings and then use this tool to spread it around. So I thought it would be a good tool and at the hardware store it costs like a few bucks. It's very cheap. And then at the hardware store also I bought this big paintbrush because I figure it's always good to have one. It was pretty cheap so I thought it's a good one. Oh, and then I bought a few things at the art store. I have this glazing medium from Liquitex Professional again. I remember that when I was doing my big canvases, such as this one and the bigger one, I wanted to try glazing. I didn't have the right tools, I didn't have any glazing medium, so I tried with water, I tried to create a medium, but it didn't work so much. So I decided to get a small glazing medium and just see how it goes. Then I got Liquitex Professional again, soft body acrylic in the color titanium white and I kind of couldn't resist. I have heard so much about this color which is the Liquitex Parchment. So I have it in the soft body again. It looks like buff titanium, something like that. So I'm excited to try it. I got a small one. So that's it, that's the small haul. Now, we are going to do some testing. I found two old canvases that I painted with acrylics in the past. We have this flowy, wavy, abstract painting. And we have this fun lady here. I want to test the brush versus the roller. And on this one, I added some new color too and I put a fixative on top. So I want to see how the varnish reacts with the fixative, if it does any difference or not. I don't know if you can see, there's little spots on this one and it's the finishing spray that I put on top. I think the nozzle was a bit clogged so it didn't come out as a uniform spray. It came out as little droplets. I did not notice it before. I think you can see like some little droplets here and there. So that's not what we want, definitely. But I used Neo Color 2 on this one. I added some orange here, some blue, and I think and some kind of darker red. Just to see what would happen when I put the varnish on top. Because I'm wondering if I'm adding Neo Color 2s to my abstract paintings. I think it could be a nice finishing touch, but we'll see. So I have these two paintings. What I was thinking is doing one half with the brush, one half with the roller, and one of these would be using the gloss varnish and the other one would be using the matte and just see what I prefer. I hesitated to buy satin finish, but I don't know, I thought since I already have some varnishes at home and it's my first time varnishing, I don't really wanna buy something else, I just wanna test out what I already have and then we'll see. So I'm just gonna divide these canvases in half. So I think maybe we should start with the brush. I'm gonna try it two ways. I think here I'm going to try to do one full sweep 
but this is not very realistic because my canvas that I want to varnish is very big so I won't be able to do that but I want to see what happens if I do one full sweep and then on this one I think I'm going to do little sweeps like this let it dry and then do a second coat I already cleaned the surfaces to make sure that there's no dust let's try the gloss varnish on this one and the matte on this one oh yeah no that's not good i can see that the neo color 2 that i put on top is reactivating even if i put a layer of fixative on top so definitely my technique with the fixative is not good enough yeah that sucks <laughs> now i'm gonna try the matte varnish on this one i decided to change the angle a little bit so hopefully we'll see the effects a bit better sorry this is the glossy varnish that i'm gonna use and on that one i use the matte varnish so I'm going to try some little strokes. I really like the glossiness. Can you see? compared to that other side. Initially, I thought I wouldn't like it, but I really like how it makes the colors pop. Okay, this is the next day. So I put two coats on this side. It looks really good. For this one, I made a mistake, obviously. So what happened is that I put this fixative on top and it says here soap and water cleanup so what i'm thinking i don't know much about fixative so be free to correct me but what i'm thinking is that it's a non-permanent fixative so let's say i would use some new color 2 on my drawing and i want to make sure that they don't reactivate if i want to put something on top then i could put this on but if i put something wet on top then it's going to reactivate because it's going to remove the varnish i think so I think that was a problem. I think that when I put the wet varnish on top, of course it reactivated and then everything else under it did too. So yesterday I decided to put two coats of this one, a final fixative on this side here. So we will see if I put the varnish on top, will it reactivate or not? This one is not supposed to be removable. I've seen people just put the varnish like that and then oh, rolling it. See, there's still some new color too on my roller. Mm, I don't like that. So I'm gonna need obviously to do a second layer because I'm sure I missed some spots. That's disappointing. How many coats is enough of fixative? Because I would like to be able to use new color too in my paintings, but at this rate, I don't feel like it's doable. Let's put the glass varnish. Okay, I have a theory. I think that one of the reasons why people wet their sponge may be because then the varnish is not absorbing as much in the sponge. Because the thing that I've noticed especially with the glossy varnish, is that on the sponge section, I don't really see it. I see a little bit of something, but it's not as glossy as the side that I applied with the brush. So I cleaned it up, I wet it, and then I removed most of the water, but it's still humid. So I'm gonna wait for these to dry, and I think I'm gonna try a third coat with a slightly wet roller and we'll see if it applies better because so far the brush side is winning oh 
Okay, I decided to continue my testing with the varnishes. This time I found a bigger painting that I created. It's on a canvas board and I thought I could try to use the roller on it to see if it fits better or not. And I'm thinking that I could do a test with this one with the brush and the gloss varnish. See if I get some streaks, some brush marks. Then I think it's going to be easier for me to decide between one of the two techniques. I wrote on the side what was applied with the roller, what was applied with the brush. Earlier I was complaining that the fixative was not good enough, but I think maybe if I put another layer it would be best because I can see clearly here that the new color too did not spread. Here, same thing, it's just in this section, so maybe I missed a spot. Maybe I should just put a third coat just to make sure that it's not gonna spread because you can really see a difference here. Here it's spread everywhere. The second application here did a really good job. I can't really see a big difference between the two sides except maybe that this side is a bit shinier than this one. So maybe the brush application is a bit better. If I use a roller maybe I would have to do at least three layers. So it's good to know. So for now, I'm thinking that I'm going to use the brush. We'll see how good of a job it does, but I can't really complain. I feel like it did a pretty good job with this one. I don't really see any lines. So we are now many weeks later. What I thought would be a simple, quick project that would last maximum two weeks turned out to be much longer. And it's all because I ran into some problems while varnishing my two acrylic paintings. Turns out I don't really like the glossy finish and I'm not exactly sure how I want to varnish them. I don't know if I told you, but when I used the roller technique, it started creating some bubbles, which I'm not sure is normal. They went away and they don't leave any marks, but what is that? I haven't seen that happening in any of the videos that I watch. So I don't know, I don't know what to do. I think I want to buy a satin finish. The gloss finish has too much shine. I don't really like that, so. And I think that matte will be too matte. So I want it in between. Yeah, basically that's it. But today I have to go downtown and I thought I'm going to stop by the place to have my artwork scan. I'm just not gonna bring my acrylic paintings because they're not ready, but I have a lot of paintings on paper that I wanna have scanned. So I'm going to go do that finally after so long. Let me show you what I'm thinking of bringing to have scanned. I'm thinking of bringing this small one. This is a painting that I created during my last Skillshare class that is not out yet. I decided I wanted to bring this one. It's one of my favorite paintings of that time when I was doing these types of abstract paintings. It still is my favorite. I love it so much. Then I have these two little abstracts. I'm also bringing this one. This one I figure would be a challenge for me to photograph it just because, well, not to photograph it per se, but it's more in the editing part. Just because there's so many colors, I want the colors to be true to this painting. And I'm not sure how I'm going to achieve that, especially since my monitor is not calibrated. So the colors I see on my screen, I have no guarantee that this is what it would look like once printed. So we have about the lighting that keeps changing. I know it goes from yellow to blue, but what can you do? And then we have this one that I like so much. I've had some demands for a print of this one by a friend of mine, or maybe the original, I don't know which one she wants, but for sure before I sell this original, I wanna have a print made. 
so that's it oh yeah no i was also wanting to bring these two acrylic paintings which are not varnished but i like the matte finish and finally last thing i want to bring my sketchbook that i just finished i don't know if you watched my sketchbook tour video but if you didn't go watch it it's amazing <laughs> there's one painting in there that i would like to have scanned but i don't know if it's doable because it's in a sketchbook so i just want to bring it and ask them if they could do it or not i got something to help me move my artworks around because as you can imagine i don't want to damage them and i don't have a car so i need a portfolio of some type i saw some portfolios that were very pretty a fabric type of portfolio with a handle and everything it looked very professional they were like 60 bucks to 80 bucks which is not the worst but i found another alternative that was like five dollars so i was like it's my first time in my whole artistic career career that i've needed to move artworks around my reasoning was i'm gonna get that and then if the need to get a portfolio arises in the future a bit more frequently then I'm gonna buy something a bit more sturdy, a bit more expensive. But yeah, I'll show you what I got. I got this. It has a handle. But it's cardboard. I'm back. <laughs> what a long day. There is some things that I don't know yet if they're going to be able to scan, like my sketchbook, because the guy that does the scanning wasn't there. He's going to be back on Tuesday. So I had to leave my sketchbook there. It's the first time I'm separated from one of my sketchbooks. It feels so weird. And then I popped by the art store because I wanted to get the satin varnish. So now I have it. I'm excited to do some tests. I did buy some fabric medium because I bought some bucket hats. And my plan for one of them, at least one of them, is to paint on it. I saw this and it says that you mix one unit of this with one unit of acrylic and you can paint on fabric. So I would like to do a test before I use it on my bucket hats, of course, because I don't want to ruin them. So I'm going to take a piece of fabric that I have, some scrap fabric, and do a test. Then I got three Derwent Ink Tense pencils. I got red violet, oak, and mustard. Then I finally got a sharpener that will work with these because these were too big for the first sharpener that I had. Then I bought a second sharpener with only two holes, one that was much bigger than these and one that was too small. So when I tried to sharpen them in the bigger hole, then it would like chip the wood and it would damage the pencil. So I had to be super careful and it was very hard to sharpen them. So now I have something that should work, hopefully. Finally, I bought this Clark Fontaine uh, watercolor paper set there are six pages in there and it's like a little folder like this i thought that i could bring this while going working up north i would like to continue working in my sketchbooks as i have been but i would also like to work a bit more on paper because i find myself doing some stuff in my sketchbooks that i love so much and then afterwards i kind of wish that it was on a piece of paper so i could frame it or i could scan it easily i could 
eventually maybe one day make some prints. I thought six papers isn't much. I think it's reasonable. The fact that they are in this little like hard folder, I think it's going to be safer for travel. Okay, so first let's try mustard. Then oak. And then red violet. I always get super excited to add the water because that's when you get to see the true beauty of the colors. Ooh, that's nice. Then we'll do the same with oak. That's a good brown. I thought it would have been a bit more green. I don't know why. And the third one, I'm very interested to see what it's going to look like. Oh, that's nice. I think it's going to be a good accent color or maybe a good color to create some mixes with. So pretty. It's been very long, many weeks and maybe a few months since we last spoke about this project. So when the printers, the scanners came back from their vacations, I brought my work there, which was at the end of August. And then I had to leave for a few weeks up north for work. I came back in October. So from the end of August to now, the middle of October, there has not been a lot of movement in this project. Well, there has been some movement, which is now I have a few of my artworks that are professionally scanned. Woohoo! So I'm going to show you what the scans look like. Overall, I am satisfied. I just feel like some of the artworks lack a little bit of contrast in their scan version. So I'm wondering, should I do a test print? I just want to see if when I print it, is it close to the original or not? Should I add a little bit more contrast into the files so that when they're printed, they're close to the original? So I think maybe I have to do a little bit of test still. They also gave me some proofs, some examples of what the artworks would look like once printed. So I have this one. I feel like this one is pretty close to the original when I compare the two. This one also is pretty close to the original. I feel like it's with this one that maybe there's not a lot of contrast. I'm not sure. And that's all the proofs that they gave me, which is surprising to me because I thought that I would have a proof for each scan. So I wonder why they only gave me three when I had six images scanned. So this is the original version, this is the scan version, and as you can see, I think it's pretty obvious that the two of them are very similar, and I feel like it captured the colors very well. We have this one. Let's compare the red from here to here. This red is way more vibrant than the red we have here. Maybe it's just me who doesn't know enough about scanning and printing and the limitation that we can face, but I see a clear difference. Finally, we have this one, which is one of my all-time favorites. And we have the proof. I feel like the contrast is there, the colors are there. I like this one. I feel like there's no retouching to be done with this one.
The other one that I had scanned was in this sketchbook. So I had this one scanned, this little cottage, and we see that there is a lot of contrast in this one. I feel like the scan does not have as much contrast. So I'm not sure if I will have to enhance the contrast myself because they're supposed to have corrected the color so it looks like the original. So maybe it's just how I see it on my computer, you know, because each computer screen is different. So I'm saying maybe my screen is the problem and not the scan. I would have to make some prints, I think, just to make sure, you know. After my previous attempts of varnishing my two small paintings, I bought some satin varnish. At first, I'd like to try it on this painting before I try it with the bigger painting to do a test, really, because I'm it's my first time varnishing a painting. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it with a rag, just make sure that there is no dust on it. And I'm thinking of doing like small strokes like this. I've seen some artists do that. I've also seen them do bigger strokes, but I feel like it becomes less precise maybe depending on the texture of this varnish i don't want to mess things up i can't see if i apply a uniform layer or not I think that's pretty good. I'm going to do the edges and then I'm going to let it dry and do a second coat tomorrow. Today is October 23rd and I just made an order for some fine art prints. So we'll see what it finally looks like on a really good quality paper. And then after that, I'll be confident if I'm satisfied with the results, of course, I'll be confident in doing some prints in the future. So we're so close to the finish line. Hopefully next week we'll have the final results and we can conclude this video. I did a second layer of this varnish on this painting and I really like the result. I feel like it's shiny, but not too much. And I can't see any paintbrush marks. So I think that this technique with the paintbrush will work just fine. So first time I did a pass this way and then the second time I did a pass this way. So the paint marks would hopefully just like cancel each other. I don't know if that's how it works, but it worked fine. So I think that's what we're going to do on that big one over there. I just came back from the printers and I now have the prints that I ordered on fine art paper. I haven't looked at them yet. I did four tests with four different paintings. We have rough textured and we have smooth textured. Wow. So I have this one. I printed the smallest size that I could because these are just tests. It looks like the original painting. It's so nice. It looks so high quality. Love it. And then the other one, that's my favorite so far. So these are the two prints I ordered on rough paper and now we have two prints oh, they fell on smooth paper. Ooh, this is nice too. So this is the first one. I love the colors. They look like the original. And this one is in fact bigger than the original. 
Do you really see the texture? It's amazing. So I can now create prints. I'm super happy. I think that this is what is going to conclude this video. This has been such a long video because it span over such a long time. A lot of experimentations. I feel like this is something that I needed to do eventually to be able to be confident in the printmaking process. I will see you soon. I have a few busy months ahead, so I'm hoping I'm able to stop skipping weeks, but I don't know. I'm still here. I'm still trying to make art, but it's a bit difficult these days. I'll come back as soon as I can, for sure. So bear with me and hopefully you get a video next week. We'll see. Take care and I will see you soon. Bye.